Hi everyone, this is fifth episode of Hostess of Europe. In this episode, I am going to share with you an interview uh, which I had with a daughter of a Syrian refugee who was born here in Greece, Marta Bakri. If she was agreed, I am going to share uh, her details with you in the description box below. This interview was recorded on um, March 27th. Uh, before, but before the interview, I wish to bring up uh, two other incidents which had happened recently in um, here, here in front of uh, UNHCR while I'm taking this uh, protest, continuing my protest. One, uh, once I had a chair and I was uh, using it to sit on it, you know, and one night when I was asleep, it was uh, disappeared. I assume it was... Um, taken by some people from that building especially I'm suspicious that security guys some of the security guys uh, took it from here I don't like them they always look for um, excuses unreasonable excuses to cause problems for me the other incident is um, um, two days ago I was um, joined by two other refugees to, who wanted to take part in this protest at the midnight at the midnight here this is the guys at the midnight uh, police came police came and charged each of us 400 400 euros 400 euros for protesting for protesting our dire situations and asking the authority to respond to our uh, problems for my case resettlement but they charged each of us 400 euros i didn't sign any papers for them so i haven't got my bills but here is a photo of the bills for two other guys and the day after that the guys disappeared i don't know why i don't know when exactly and uh, maybe they were afraid or maybe something else happened i don't know they just disappeared this is greece this is greece greece we have no rights we have no rights so that's it for now let's get into the interview i will see you by end of the interview till then bye well, hello. I'd like you to tell me how many days you are here. Two days. And and how ma and why? Uh huh. Two days, seven days. I'm here on hunger strike. I don't eat. I don't drink. I don't have a life in Greece, and I want to be resettled in another country. And that means a letter from this UNHCR. That's why I'm here. The problem is I just cannot uh, settle in this country. I don't have a life yet. I want to be resettled in another, in another country, okay? I contacted on myself, I'm on my own. I spoke with the embassy of two countries. They told me I have to go to UNHCR and bring them a, a letter which is called referral. Can you see? On the placard. Referral from UNHCR. But now uh, I'm speaking with UNHCR for one, year, one and a half a year. Uh, they never replied to my emails. So, also Greek authorities asylum office. Both of them never replied. So this is the situation. I have, I have uh, decided to come here and uh, take a hunger strike to, to receive a reply, a response to my situation. I'm just asking for a letter. It's obvious that I don't have a life in Greece and it's obvious that I need resettlement. So why this organization forces me to to say to express my need 
to show mine it in this way. It's their job. It's their job. United Nations Refugee Agency has to find protection for refugees. Do I have protection in Greece? No. Find protection. Protection for me in this case is resettlement, referral. So why are you forcing me to stay in this condition for, for days? And before I start camping, I was coming here for two weeks. Standing on foot is day five hours, hoping that they will see me and respond to me, but uh, I was wrong. Uh, the reason I am here is just to leave Greece and go to somewhere I can establish a new, a new life. Be happy, be productive, be in progress, you know? Make something for my life, good. make good of my life. Not, uh, you see, I am uh, in the tent. Not like this, I don't want this. I am an engineer, I am an author, I wrote two books. Uh, I had a good uh, work in an international company with good prospects but in Iraq. But uh, they destroyed my life, okay? Now I am stuck here. So I have a million reason to be here. But I cannot stay stuck in this country because I cannot, I cannot live in Greece. I have to leave this country. And this is going to happen uh, through this United Nations Refugee Agency. Otherwise, if they don't help, the only other way, non real way, for me is to go to the, to the human traffickers. So I cannot do that, honestly. These people are uh, claiming to be uh, protecting refugees, so protect me. I expect protection. That's all. Today, uh, I stopped four of their employees uh, to inform the protection unit to come outside and speak to me. But uh, uh, you see, there is uh, nobody yet here. What kind of protection is this? And my health is in a severe condition. You can see it. I haven't been drinking, I haven't been eating. Honestly, what is one of this? Uh, I have a refugee status, so help. Refugee status. I am not an asylum seeker. I am not migrant. I am not immigrant. I am a refugee. I have a refugee status. I need help. And you are here now eight days? Eh? Seven days. Tomorrow will be eight. And you don't eat, don't drink water, right? No, oh, nothing. Until now, until this second, nothing. From now on, I don't know. But until this second, nothing. And how do you feel? I feel bad. I am uh, so tired. I cannot uh, stand up. I feel some pain here. Uh, you see, my mouth is uh, uh, dried completely. My voice is changed. I can't walk. I have some. Pre I feel some pressure around my stomach. And uh, for now, also sometimes I feel dizzy. You know, I feel dizzy. That's it. Yes, because seven days it's long. It's not one day. It's not two. It's seven. It's long, but tell this to this criminal in this organization, not to me. I know it's, it's long. Here you this. Trapped in this. If I try to leave Greece, I have to pay human traffickers. That means, that means European governments 
actually are behind the human traffickers. Why? I tell you why. I, I don't know if you are fully aware of the news or not, but I give you two examples. Three examples, okay? First, sorry for this. First, I don't know if you, you remember. Yeah. Dutch government in Denmark last year, within one week, they passed a law, okay, to seize, to seize, to take away refugees' assets. Okay, that is one example. They did that in one week. Okay, now another example. I gave you last month. Hungarian government passed a new law. Okay, a new law. Whatever they want to do, they gather in this fucking day, fucking parliament and make a law and pass it in one week. Yeah, last month Hungarian government passed a new law to to put all refugees, asylum seekers, all of the people in detention for unknown period of time. That was if that happened uh, last week. Another example I want to give it to you. That one is a statement from uh, Prime Minister of uh, UK. Uh, she has a statement which says there's an international government, international institution and organizations such as UN, UNHCR, and the rest of uh, UN bodies because these organizations are funded by their government and uh, the rest of Western governments, therefore, therefore, this organization has to serve their uh, agenda, their interest, and uh, in particular to the refugees is issues, uh, she suggested that all refugees are deserve no life. They are animals. They deserve no life. And they have to stay in refugee camps in Turkey, in Jordan, in Libya, and in, in Greece forever. We don't care how they live. We don't care about their future, their life, their prospects. We want them sorry, to stay in these refugee camps for as long as I want. This uh, Prime Minister of UK said that in a statement. Because I am strong. Because I am a strong member of the uh, Security Council in the United Nations. And the United Nations has to do what I say to the United Nations. And human life doesn't matter to me. And the thing is, from the other side of the picture, you see the same government is making a ton of profits by selling weaponry to the I don't know, Malaysia, Arabic, Arabic government to destabilize the whole Middle East and Africa. And they are happy with that. And nobody can speak with, about it because it's against their interest. What about my interest? What about my life? One more thing about UK, you know? to build his first fence uh, 
uh, UK and France they already had their own long and tall fence between uh, uh, British Tunnel, you know, in Calais. And that wall is to keep everyone out. Okay, everyone out. Whether you have a refugee status, you are not allowed to enter the country. Whether you are an asylum seeker, whether you are a migrant, whatever your status is, you, you cannot enter that country unless you pay again to the smugglers or try many times, maybe face death in one of these trials. I don't know, things like that. Once there was a time when uh, there was war in whole Europe, okay? And uh, many has become refu have become refugees, okay? And what do you think happened to that refugees at that time? Do you think that they faced fences, borders, uh, stuck in a country like Greece, uh, live, left alone in freezing conditions to die? No. Do you know what happened? All of them boarded ships, freely, ships full of people and went to other safe countries. Why it cannot happen now? Why they are not giving us a safe passage? Why every policy, every system is uh, causing refugees more harm and more damage and like forcing us to go to the, to take dangerous routes, to go to human traffickers, try difficult paths. Why? Are they blind now? Are they blind now? Are we not human to these people? Do you think? Are they think of themselves as more human than us? Why? Funny thing is, they always appear in the, appear in the streets and speak about human rights. Is this human rights? Do you call this human rights? This, uh, I told you I was, I'm here for seven days. These seven days, do you know how many times police came, destroyed my tent, took me to the police station, insulted me? Insulted me here, insulted me in the police station. Even the UNSCR employee insulted me here. Okay, but I tell you what about the police station. What did what did they tell me in the police station? I make you I I make make it short, okay? Yeah. I police knew that I have a few distances, okay? Therefore it has to know that I can, I'm not safe to go back to Middle East or to Iran or to any other country in other region. But police suggest me, telling me to go back to Iran. That's one thing. The other thing is, tell me, don't go to your NSCR office. Go to the park. Stay in the park. Okay? This is one thing. The other thing, this is what police says. Go kill yourself. This is police told me. This is police. She said it was a female. Go kill yourself. Don't look for help from UNSCR. Go kill yourself. This is what police says in Europe. Why should I kill myself? All this travel, journey, how can I call it? What are you searching for? Hopefully, I had a, a very difficult life 
and then I and of course so the main reason I wanted to immigrate was to be among good people civilized people with understanding with the spirit of human good okay that's what I was searching for but if you ask me have I found it in the Europe I tell you no. And you're gonna continue staying here, but your plans, how you see this going on? My plans, I was, I was looking for a right solution to the authorities, okay? I don't know if I mentioned this before in this interview or not. Uh, I told you that I contacted the embassies, two embassies, Canadian embassy and US embassy, to help me because of why I contact, contacted these two embassies because the, uh, there is a Dublin regulation and because I have this uh, paper from Greece, I can't seek protection in other European countries, so I have to look for somewhere else. And these two countries, I have this correspondence in my email, okay, you like it. Uh, they told me I have to go to U.S. Yeah, I bring them a letter for resettlement consideration. This is they call referral. So that's why I'm here. Hopefully they will respond. I don't know, I don't have any other plan. I don't have money to go to the human traffickers. So I am hopeful that this unit can finally respond to my issue. But I don't know about that. I'm just hopeful that they will respond. That's my plan. They will continue. I don't know for how long, but uh, no, we will see. I don't know. So that was the interview. Please, um, Share your thoughts, your comments, and feedbacks are much appreciated to me. And uh, see you next time. Bye.